What is up? Welcome back to the URM Academy YouTube channel. I'm Joey Sturgis, and today I have something pretty cool I'm gonna show you in Cubase. If you guys don't use Cubase, you can just click off this video now because this is only applicable to Cubase. Um, but one of the things that uh, is really important when you're working with a lot of different people, especially on online, is you're gonna need to know how to trade sessions back and forth. And when you're working on a session and you go through to do a lot of different things, maybe you're doing some edits some consolidating, you're importing files from different places, you're doing all this stuff, the session starts to get kind of complicated. You get files that are scattered all across your hard drive, et cetera, et cetera. So there's actually a uh, process that you can use that works all the time to basically consolidate and pack up a session so you can send to somebody and you don't have to worry about them not being able to open it, missing files, etc. So really it all starts with going to the pool. And in Cubase, the pool is what holds all of the files that make up the session. It holds all this other data here as well, such as like, you know, which algorithm is being used for time stretching per file and other things like that. What you want to do here is you want to get the screen so that you have this empty space here so that you can right click and in here you're going to want to do what's called remove unused media. When you do this, it kind of just takes away all the files that you don't need. So if you, let's say you're recording vocals forever and uh, you have a whole bunch of vocal takes that aren't even in the mix, you don't need those anymore, especially when you're sending it to someone else. So click remove unused media and then it's going to say do you want to move that stuff to the trash or do you want to remove it from the pool now when you put it in the trash it at least keeps it in a little folder down here if you remove it from the pool it stays on your hard drive but it goes away from the session so i like to just remove from the pool you can also put it in the trash you want to make sure that it actually did something for all you ocd people <laughs> that's the best way and then you'll see it in the trash and then of course you can hit empty trash and it goes away Next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is click on prepare archive. And when you do that, it goes through and scans the whole session and makes sure that everything is going to be ready for packing it up as an archive. Now, it completed this instantly on the session that I have open because this session is not that complicated. But if you have a session where there's a ton of files all over the place, it's going to make sure that all of those are found and that they're all in a place where Cubase can reach them. So once you've done that, then you're ready to basically create the archive. So you don't need this window anymore to do that. You're just gonna to go to file and we're gonna to go to backup project. Now, when you do that, it's gonna ask you for a folder location. Now, I recommend doing this, you know, somewhere in a space where it's blank. You have a blank space. Uh, don't put the folder within this folder, for example. It's really a bad idea. It gets confusing. And actually, I think it might warn you if you try to do that. So, so what you're going to do is just go to like the desktop, for example, create a new folder. And I would do chunk mix. And this is an empty folder. Now, the most important thing about it is that this folder is not within the folder of the session and that the folder is empty. So then we're going to hit open. And it's gonna tell you the project name. You can keep it the same or you can call it backup or copy or however you wanna do that. This first option here is called keep current project active. So if you uncheck that, what's going to happen is when it completes the whole process of archiving and zipping up all the files and all that stuff into the folder, it's going to actually switch the project that's open here in this window behind here that's gonna to switch to the location that you selected. If you do this and you keep working on the song, you're gonna be affecting the new session, not the old one that you started with to create the backup session. If you go to minimize audio files, what it's going to do is it's gonna look at all of the different edits that you've made, all the different cuts, and it's going to remove any additional audio. So if I was to, let's say, let me just zoom out here a little bit. Let's say this, see this little thing here at the end of the song? Let's say I cut that off and I hit delete. Um, in a normal Cubase session, that's still there. See, I can, I can reveal it here. I can save this session, close it, reopen it, resize this, boom, I get the audio back. But if you leave it like this, and then you go to um, backup project, and you select this, 
what's going to happen is it's not going to keep that anymore. So minimizing audio files is basically removing all of the little parts that aren't used. Um, next, you've got make direct offline processing permanent. This is uh, good for you if you uh, are doing a lot of offline processing stuff. Um, basically kind of self-explanatory. I usually leave it unchecked. Then there is remove unused files. I always turn that on and do not back up video. We're not working with video, so we don't really care there. Um, but if you really want to give this session to someone else and let them have that audio that's revealed um, on the audio events, then you can have this unchecked, for example. So that's kind of up to you. This is probably how I would do it right here. I typically would like to not minimize audio files because a lot of times you can get a little bit edit happy when you're recording and you can remove some breaths that you didn't mean to remove in the vocals, for example. So I kind of like to keep that unchecked just so I can preserve all of that. So then we're going to click OK and it's going to do its thing. This is it basically copying all of the files that we would need, whatever's necessary to make this project able to open on another computer. And it's done. And then you can uh, basically go to the folder that it created here. And you'll notice that uh, all the audio files are nice and neat right there. We've got our project file, we've got our edits, our images, everything's ready to go. So you would just basically zip this folder. So if I go to desktop and I go to compress, uh, well, I don't have any hard drive space, but if I did, I would compress that and boom, you can send that file to somebody and you're good to go. And that's pretty much it for um, taking a project from Cubase and packing it all up and getting it able to be sent to someone. Um, if you like this video, uh, leave us a like below, subscribe, smash that bell button to get notified when we upload new videos. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll catch you next time.